Hello, this lesson we're going to focus on watercolour landscapes, looking at experiment pages in the GCSE sketchbook where you should be showing how you are experimenting with different styles, different techniques, working from your primary photographs or from your secondary sources. So the idea by the end of this lesson is that you can understand how to manipulate watercolour effectively and be able to create a range of effects which could be applied to landscape painting using watercolour. <coughs> So to start off, I'm going to use a, I'm going to create a mountain range. Really, 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 really easy to do, actually, to make it look really, really effective if you follow a few simple steps. So to start with, I'm going to do a wet on wet background. So just create a wet background at the top of my page. Again, I've used masking tape um, just to create a neat outline. And I've got a title there, watercolour landscapes. The mask and tape works really well, so when you take it off you've got some space to do your annotations and explain what you've done and how you've done it and if you like it or not. So I'm just going to add some tiny bit of blue here at the top. Look at your image, where is it blue, where is it pink, is it all blue, is it all pink, is it all orange, is it all yellow? Use the colours that you can see in your images. But you can exaggerate the colours. But to start with I just want quite a pale sky and I'm using the wet on wet technique to make sure that it's really softly blended. This is just the sky, so it's not the focus of the image. The focus is going to be the actual mountain range. But I can see some yellow in my sky. I can see some blue in the corner, and I can see some pinky tones in the top corner here. I'm just going to blend it with the side of my brush quite quickly. Um, it doesn't work as well if you do it really, really slowly, because it doesn't blur into each other as well. So I've got a really, really soft wash base layer of my sky. I'm just going to leave that to dry really quickly before I build up the first mountain. Okay, so when you do a mountain range, you start from the furthest mountain, you start from the background, and then you work your way towards the front, the foreground. Uh, um, the foreground. If you are working from a secondary image, which you probably are, because it's unlikely you've taken your own pictures of mountains, you could spend some time really, really carefully drawing out with a with a really pale pencil line the shape of the mountain um, but if you're quite confident with going straight with painting you can do that so I'm going to use a tip of a medium brush just to create my outline and I'm going to go over the sky as you can see just up and down and I'm just in my head going when does the mountain go up is it quite pointy or is it quite flat and it just where does it go up where does it go down and I've got that line of my first mountain range and then I'm just going to go along the side of the line, trying really hard to not go over my outline. I'm going to drag my colour in my outline, underneath my outline. And I've used blue because the blue in the images I'm working from is quite prominent. This would actually work in any colour. You could do pink mountains if you wanted to. It would still have the same effect mine look blue so I've got that thick outline now and I'm just going to wash my brush not too carefully just a little bit dab it on some paper towel and then use that damp brush just to use the side of my brush wiggle into that paint and it should just bleed into the water so when the paint just bleed into the water it's blending in so you don't want, you can still quite see on mine, I've got that outline, I've got a bit more paint on it and just on my brush and just run it down there because I want it to blend, it is called bleeding but it's the same effect as just to blend into there. So then I've got my first mountain range finished, I do want to just make sure I don't have that obvious thick line so I can just run my paintbrush along there, you see I'm really using the side of my paintbrush not the tip to do this. I'm just making sure I've not got that obvious paint mark and that it's got quite a gradual blend to it and I'll keep doing that until I'm happy with it and then I'll that, let that dry and then do the next one I think that is not too wet anyway so next time you have to make it brighter when something is closer to you it's brighter so it's called saturation so if for example you held a leaf really close to your face you could see that it's really, really green if someone held that same leaf at the end of your garden it wouldn't look as vibrant if someone held that same leaf a mile away 
and you couldn't really see it if it was a really really big leaf the color wouldn't be as green would it so if you imagine trees in the distance they're not bright bright green are they they're almost gray in tone and um, whereas a tree really close to you might have really really green leaves so as we're getting closer the mountains are getting brighter so again you could use a brush um, a pencil sorry to just make sure that you've got the right outline to these mountains and I'm overlapping and you could if you if you drew this out with your pencil then you'd go along with your brush or you can go straight on like I have but I've gone over the last mountain range with my new color I'm going to do the same thing as before and run it underneath run that color underneath there <coughs> And then exactly the same thing as before, I'm going to use just a damp brush to just blend that in, bleed, so it bleeds in and it just fades in. And this is quite wet now because I've used quite a lot of water, so I am going to have to be really careful just to let that dry now and not work on it until it's dry because you want a really, really sharp line between the different mountain ranges and, and if it's not dry it will just blend into one so I'm going to let that dry before I move on to my next one okay so with my last one it was slightly too wet so I've had to just go over it just with the same colour again and it's darker this time just because it's drier so I've just gone over like that and then blended it out main thing you want with this is that stark contrast between the last mountain range and the new one so it has to be really really clean and neat line it has to be that contrast between the colours so this time I've got a little mountain over here that I'm going to add in and it has to be, as I said, obviously darker, at least the outline, the top bit has to be obviously darker than the last. So I'm going to mix a darker blue this time and then this mountain doesn't go all the way across, it's just to this side, just going to pat it to make sure it's dry enough and then and again you could do this with a pencil that one actually goes over the last bit a little bit and it just disappears here and then it comes down and then I just blend it out don't need to worry about that bit because my last mountain is going to hide it see I've got the new mountain over the last one and I can see that contrast between the new one and the last one, just put a bit more paint there so I've got that contrast, that's a bit too curved and as with any painting or drawing you can work on all the refined detail as much as you want, I've just made that more pointy, you know you can make it as accurate as you please, usually the more accurate the more effective it will be certainly the more detail the more effective it will be right so now I'm going to do the last mountain which is really 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 dark so I'm going to use a lot of black a lot of blue different blues to make it not just fake blue lots of black lots of blue not solid black but you know again you could use these, any colour with these mountains you could do red mountains green mountains <laughs> be semi abstract but it's you have the same effect of saturation to create distance. So now the last one has to be really, really bold. And this one you would see more detail because it's closer to you. So I'm going to make sure I've got a little bit more on this. Moving my hands a little bit to get that squiggly line showing a bit more. of the rocks and things on the mountain up a bit here if you did this with your pencil it would be absolutely fine as long as you do it pale you don't want to see the pencil underneath the paint the pencil should be pale a bit darker here Got that contrast between the two mountain ranges again same as before go in with the side of my brush making sure I don't go over that outline so I'm just dragging my brush along making sure I don't go over the outline keeping it as neat as I can add in a few little points as I go along 
track it all in, along and then you'll blend it out and then you're finished so hopefully you've created the effect of distance using saturation saturation is a different intensity of color of water too much and blend it out so this is a really really easy way to create depth and it works with any landscape really if you was doing a forest you'd have the trees more intense in color at the front and more pale further they go away from you okay so that's my mountain range hopefully creating the effect of distance okay so now i'm going to create a landscape with a lake in it to show you how to create reflections so start off you create your wash to create your sky background so you put your color down it's clear i need to clean my water doesn't matter too much because my sky is quite a murky yellow again hopefully you'll be working from your own images but if there's a specific reason it's a bit too bright there so i'll just blur it in then um, you might be working from secondary sources so look at the colors in the sky and just get that in quite a murky yellow sky and then it does need to dry before you do the next stage just let it dry so this one was really really watery so it's quite blended let it completely dry before you move on Okay, so when it's dry, you can draw your landscape lines. So the line between the sky and, in this case, the lake, but the land. It's just going to help me know where everything is. Okay, so just a basic line. Look at your image to do that. And then I'm going to add in where the trees are. So this effect is layering start off with really really watery this is still going to be quite watery and I'm just going to get with the side of my brush blobs that hopefully create the effect of trees I'm going to get quite a lot of water because I want this watery effect and I'm just using the side of my brush I'm not worrying at all about any detail in the trees at this stage I'm not worrying about leaves I'm not worried about branches not really worried about light and dark I'm just literally blobs with the side of my brush squiggling it around and it's just creating a base layer so here is actually it's quite a grey tree so I'm just going to add a little bit of black into that one a really really big tree all the way up here again no detail just the shape and I'm using a circular motion to create that bumpy side to the tree but I'm not worrying too much about detail and then there's more of a green tree here again I've turned my tree into a blob so I've simplified it into a blob so it's created a background for each tree and then I know where they are and then I've not used too much water so they should be okay to work straight on top of if they're too wet it won't work so then you're just going to add a little bit more intensity of color you're going to look at where are the trees light where are the trees dark so each tree individually this one for example there's some dark on this side of the tree so I'm just going to add that on and then I've got that difference between light and dark when I say dark I've not added any black I'm just adding more color to my brush so this one there's some darkness in there all that's doing is creating more of a 3D effect, making it a little, a little bit more interesting than just a flat surface. But this is uh, layering. So again, I'm using round motions, and I'm now getting different colours in the trees, um, rather than just one flat surface. This one has quite a lot of dark greens coming through the middle of it, so circular motions some little dark areas on the tips and this one actually is really quite bright because these trees are closer than these ones so these ones need to be brighter so I'm going to use more green on the brush 
and actually on these trees I can see some yellow as well so now I've got three colours on these ones I've got the base layer got some yellowy colours still not worrying about any detail not worrying about any branches or leaves I just built up a base layer while that's drying I'm just going to do the lake that's underneath it so to start with I'm just going to do a wash look at the colour of your lake what is it roughly and then use a medium or a big brush mine is actually quite green so I'm just going to do that on there just doing this while my trees are drying so I can't do anything to my trees while they're drying I'm just going to do this lake and I'm working in horizontal lines same as when you do a sky when you do water horizontal lines but the lake's green because the trees are green so I've got the reflection in there really really watery and when it's still wet I can start to create my reflections so reflections look so effective but they're so 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 easy I'm just putting the same colours on my brush and then I'm going underneath my trees but with lines so underneath each one and it will create the effect so when it's a little tree I do a little blob and when it's a big tree I'm going to do a big blob but rather than round I'm just doing lines because reflections are almost blurred with the ripples of the water more colour in there. That was quite a dark reflection. Reflection, line, 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 line. Reflection, line, 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 line. So I've gone under each tree with a smudge made up of horizontal lines. I am going to need that to dry until I move on, but I've made sure I've done that when it's wet so it's blurred a little bit and then it looks like reflections on the lake. It needs to go completely dry now before I move on. Okay, so it's dry enough for me to add some detail. If you're ever adding detail with watercolour, your base has to be dry and your paint has to be quite a thick consistency. So I've used lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of paint, not a lot of water. If I use a lot of water, it will just blur and bleed into the background. So if you squint at your image, where are the really, really dark areas? So I'm going to get the dark areas in. So there's a dark blob here, dark bits here, teeny tiny little bits of dark. Contrast creates a painting and a drawing and anything really, high contrast between light and dark. So you want to get all those tiny, even if it's a tiny bit of dark, you see how that's now created the division between the lake and the land. So it's a bit more browny area here, but still quite a thick consistency. So I'm just going to, not too work well, because this style is quite um, watery, quite, I suppose, messy. And the next one I'm going to do is a little bit more neat and refined. So I'm just getting those little dark areas in here. And then some quite a lot of dark areas here as well. So I've layered from light to dark essentially. Starting with the lightest area which was the sky. Builded up the light background colours in the trees. And then I'm going to add the detail. I'm using a small brush now and a lot of paint and then I can get a thin line I'll hold it up I can get a thin line which now I want detail I'm going to get some branches in the branches don't all need to connect because actually I can't see them too much and I'm just going to add all the dark areas and the dark details contrast being the most important thing really to create an interesting interesting drawing or painting I'm making sure that I've got some quite intricate thin lines again you need a small brush to do that but I'm not worrying about them being perfect just looking at something on the end there add in the dark areas and then the dark areas will reflect into the water as well so I'm just going to drag them in to the water where I've got an obvious dark bit it would be dragged into the water so now it depends how detailed you want it I quite like that it's quite a watery um, landscape of a lake so if I wanted to add more detail I could get a lot more of a thick consistency on my brush and for example I could start to look at 
leaves so I can start saying on here different leaves on here and just build that up it depends how detailed you want it add as much more detail as you can at this stage with or as you want to sorry with um, your brush of a thick consistency I'm not worrying about the detail being refined and accurate but I'm layering, layering, layering until I think, yeah, I'm happy with that, that works, that's effective. So even in the reflections you'll find there's detail um, and there's a different array of colours. I'm just dabbing them on to create that effect. Of trees you'll find that there's always less detail in the background because they're further away so you can't see it in the same way. But as quite a watery landscape, I'm happy with that. And and then I'm going to do a more refined one next. Okay, so as opposed to the quite watery, blurry landscape, I'm going to do a neater style, just so you can have a look at different styles. The idea being that in your sketchbook you show that you've experimented with a range of styles. So I'm going to get reasonably watery, I suppose medium consistency on my brush. And building the sky and then I'm going to do the same with the land so just build in big brush horizontal lines that's going to be where the sky meets the land I'm going to put more blue this corner because you, you never want your sky to be solid one same color you want it to be variations it's going to be a bit lighter here and then it's going to be slightly more solid here and then I'm going to do A green land. So going with the green, it's mixed green and yellow to make more yellow green. And same, you're going to get your base layer. And then when that's dry, we can start to add the detail. So it's as simple as blue at the top, green at the bottom, your horizon line going across. The middle of the page okay so now this is dry everything I'm going to do is with a thick consistency so this is almost for someone that likes to be very controlled in the way they paint this is quite blurry quite messy very watery um, you don't have a lot of control of where it goes with this one's going to be very very controlled and it's just going to see and hopefully show you the different effects you can get with watercolor you should be showing in your sketchbook that you can have a go and hopefully effectively create different effects so I'm going to add some trees and I'm going to work in a thick consistency so in order to do that you just don't use a lot of water so I'm mixing a really really dark color and start to add some trees in still works in the same way where you work light and then you build up to darker and darker um, but all in quite a thick consistency so quite controlled, it's almost like drawing because the paint's not going anywhere. I'm going to draw the shapes of the bushes and trees in the background here. And then on my image there's some shapes here as well, like trees. And I'm just going to draw the basic shapes to start with. Okay, so I've done some base colours. And then I'm just going to get a darker colour. And as I said, you're going to work your way from dark, sorry, from light to dark. So now I'm just going to add some darker colours in where I can see them. And it is a lot like drawing, really. You're just putting the paint where you want it, and not much is happening to the paint, it's just staying. Some shadows here. I'm using really fine point of my brush and what I like about this style is you've got that really different effect of the soft wash in the background and then the bold colours on top and I like that watercolour can create those different effects so this one really is about however much detail you want you can continue to do as much as you want there's a very green line in the background. And it's just going on as a pencil or a pen would 
drag your lines in order to get a neat line, drag your brush. There's some details here. And some quite big bits of grass here. It's exactly the same as with the mountains. When something's closer to you, it's going to be bigger. So there's some big blades of grass. And then they're going to be smaller as they go into the background. But you can see nothing's happening to the paint. It's just staying where I put it. So this is really, really quite neat and delicate. You can see I'm going over the masking tape. Not worrying too much about keeping that neat because I'm going to peel that off. I'm just adding all the details. I'm going to continue to add some blades of grass smaller so really really quite delicate as you can see in the background tiny little thin marks and then I could even do really big ones at the front to give that perspective of someone standing in the fields looking onto this distance but actually they can see these thicker blades here and I'm just going to build that up okay so now I've done that with green I'm going to do the same with more of a yellowy colour making sure that I've got some different, still going to be yellowy green, but different green, different colours in there to make it more interesting. If you want to take one of your own of these pictures, you need to go to a, a field with some really long grass or some long crops and you need to be quite down in the crop so you can see blades of grass almost in front of you and then some smaller ones in the background. So to do the smaller ones, I'm just really, really lightly flicking my brush. The bigger ones, I'm taking my time a little bit to do them more controlled so they're neater but I would do this now until it's pretty much full of lines so I continue to do that and then instead of using really yellow I'm going to go back and use some darker colours and put some darker colours in there even can notice that there's some more yellowy colours in the trees so I'm just going to add those on So now with a darker colour and then that's going to be finished. Okay, now I've got my darker green colour, quite a thick consistency. And I'm going to add that on some more careful lines and I'm going to add some detail as well. Tiny little dots on the trees. You can have dots in the grass as well. Look at what you can see. You might have pink flowers that look like little dots. Um, just creates more texture. You know, some of the crops might have little buds on them. Whatever you can see in your image. Point being that this is much more controlled. Every mark you make is on there and will remain on there. It's not going to blur into another colour. So I'm just making sure these trees don't look like circles by creating more leaves around them. These ones as well. So just creating some more detail around them. It's up to you how much detail you do, as with ever. So some really, really big ones just to finish. And because they're dark, they've got that higher saturation, much like the mountains, the front ones should be bolder. Something's closer to you, it's brighter as well as being bigger. So I've got that effect of getting smaller as it comes or as it goes into the distance. So you can work on it until you're happy with it, making sure that you've got every single dot and mark and line and flower and bud and anything until you're happy with it really. It's completely up to you, as much detail as you want. But this is the um, effect and the technique of using quite a wet background, letting it dry and then working on top. Okay, so I'm just going to peel off all the masking tape and show you all the three finished. Okay, so just to finish off refining this last one, what I've done is put a brush straight in the black and I've just, when it's dry, gone over, put loads and loads and loads of black on my brush, I've just gone over where I want the dark areas to be, so the shadows, and it's just cre created, can you see on there, like a shadow effect on the trees on here as well and put in some darker bits at the front just so I've got that contrast remember contrast 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 being 
such an important thing in any painting or drawing. So basically gone over and exaggerated all the darker bits. You can see the really, really different effects you can create with watercolour. Really, really neat, high intensity, the effect of distance. Really, really watery, really good for reflections because if you're doing water, it makes sense to have a watery effect and a more refined, neat style. Okay, I hope that's helpful for you. Give it a go and show some different creative effects using watercolour in your sketchbook.